Hello friends, it's me again. It's time for another one of these. There may not be actually much of a story in this one, but this is more of a podcasty thing, but I kind of want to release it under this specific grouping because of the subject matter. So, a while back, Walter Fate did an honestly very, very good episode about this, and I kind of decided, after seeing this little entry on Tales of Neckbeards, I decided I should kind of make a point about this too. So Walter more or less started this conversation in my book. I mean, somebody else may have done it first, but I don't know. This is the first example I have because, you know, he's cool. And he did this episode basically pointing out how to tell if a neckbeard story is fake. And I agree with pretty much all of his points, to be completely honest with you. He makes a lot of very good points. And, yeah, there's a lot with that. There's a lot of really fake stories posted to these subreddits because there's no way to really verify if these things are, in fact, true. Unless you, you know, specifically know the person who wrote it. So, what prompted me to do this is one person made this comment on the Tales of Neckbeard subreddit, like I said earlier. And they ask, I would say they write, but more or less they ask... Uh, how do we know they're not fake? Some of the stories I've seen on here and uh, Neckbeard stories and YouTube seem a little far-fetched. How do we know that they're real and not just fake stories? I have a bad habit of immediately assuming someone's lying unless I'm proven otherwise. This is a really good point, and it actually kind of gets to this specific conversation in the comments that I actually really like and think makes a lot of good points here. One user replies with, I tend to feel that as long as a story is an out outlandish and obvious attempt to gain upvotes and awards, then I'll buy it unless I'm proven false. And OP replies, if it checks off more than three neckbeard stereotypes, then I do get suspicious. And the same person replies, right, like nerd slash geek and overweight, that's believable. Plus they're smelly or unshaven, yeah, I could see someone not having great hygiene. Plus they always wear a trench coat and trench coat, I'm sorry, and or fedora, now I'm getting kind of skeptical. Plus, they're saying milady and talk like the protagonist of an anime set in the 1800s. Yeah, now I'm calling bullshit. And they constantly hit on anything and openly talk about sexually pleasing women and whatever fetishes they have. Yeah, bullshit meters off the chart. I agree. There's a lot of those points that actually do stand out as this being really outlandish. Specifically, the stereotype of the dress. There are some neckbeards who do dress like that, but that is not always the case. And, I mean, fuck, I knew like five of them, and I don't think a single one of them actually owned a trench coat. Plus, this is South Louisiana. You'd have to be crazy to own one. That being said, I own a cloak, but that's a different story. So... <laughs> It's because I'm a weirdo and I go to the Ren Fair. The other thing that really kind of sets off when I know a story is fake is specific things that happen in the story. One is something that Walter actually said. If you have to introduce your characters, and there's a whole mess of characters, and they all have very specific details about little things that they are and all this other stuff, and yet maybe one of them is in this story... Why did you do that? Like, what is the point of introducing all these people? Do they come up later? Is there a thing about it? I kind of took a lot of these writing tips to heart whenever I wrote my own neckbeard stories, and specifically tried to stick to only introducing the characters that actually had a major impact, if I introduced them at all. Most of the time, it just kind of came up organically. It was a whole story of just like, this is a thing that's happening, and then this is what happened. You don't have to have a full-on character rundown bio unless it's a very specific thing. Like, this kind of story is a thing where you're not blatantly introducing something, or you don't have a way to work in someone else's backstory organically. To constantly go out of your way to write a bio in every single chapter with every single part that only explains about 1% of one character that's going to be in this, and yet it contains 30 different people, 
yeah, that seems a little like, you know, I have friends and I want them to know that this YouTube person is going to read it. The other one is the stereotypicalness of the neckbeard. There's a lot of things that these guys can be, and awful is definitely one of them, but I don't know. There's certain things that just stand out that are just kind of like, well, much like that person said. If they're too stereotypical, it's just too unbelievable. A while back, I was actually recommended a story, something that was cross-posted to my own subreddit from about four different Neckbeard subreddits. So, first off, link spamming sets off my alarm first. Like, I'm not saying every single story that's sent to me has to only be written on my subreddit. Like, no, that's not at all a thing. But if I check the history of that post and find that it's been listed on, like, seven different subreddits, specifically if it's all simultaneously like, within a few minutes of each other, this kind of seems like fishing, you know? I'll give it a chance, and I'll read it, which is what I did with the story that I was recommended. I won't name any names, but let's just say that the neckbeard in this story was brutally outlandish. Like, saying the kind of horrible shit in a work setting that would immediately get you fired, and yet somehow is not fired because there are three more parts of this. So, yeah... No, I don't really believe that. Especially considering that the follow-up parts also had to do with not only this neckbeard being slapped down for their horrible behavior, but also physically assaulted and yet no repercussions were done. And it was all seen as like a ha-ha, got him. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. That never happened. That's not true. I may have read some stories in the past in which that kind of stuff does show up, and I try to vet these as best I can, but again, I'm not exactly an expert. You know, I'm not like the most informed expert ever, and sometimes shit slips through the cracks that just isn't real, or sometimes I just read it because it is entertaining. And that is true. Some of the stories that I've read in the past are kind of bleh, and they're not exactly the best. But I try to get this kind of stuff out because nobody wants to hear a fake story like that. It's the reason why I specifically set up an entire thing for reading these about Neckbeard fan fiction. Because it's real obvious that people want to write these kind of stories, these kind of fake, over-the-top, outlandish, silly stories about Neckbeards who don't actually exist. But they don't exactly have a place to express that. Which is what I was trying to do with that whole, like, you know, write neckbeard fanfiction. And honestly, I'm still doing. You absolutely can. I will read it. Um, you know, I can't guarantee, actually. I shouldn't have said it like that. But you know what I mean. I'll look at it. I'll definitely look it over. But that's not, like, a thing on some of these other subreddits. This was specifically done to get, like upvotes and reddit awards and all this other stuff to which i personally just do not understand like why the fuck does it matter if you have something interesting to say say the interesting thing you don't have to constantly make shit up like this so it is a lot of very strange things a little strange behavior that i've noticed in these and it's gotten to the point with both of these subreddits that i kind of have to go through and read things that are posted you know in there. I usually like to go into a story without knowing a huge deal about it beforehand, so I can kind of be surprised at the same time you guys are. I like to kind of read it fresh. I don't like to go over it and know every detail and all this other stuff. But with the fact that people are writing obviously fake stories, now I have to, and it ruins the surprise of that. And I don't really like that. I like having the surprise. I like the unique approach. I don't really get that from things that are posted specifically to my subreddit, which, thank you guys very much for that. Uh, you label everything very accurately and do an amazing job with that. So, I do really enjoy that. That is a wonderful thing. And I obviously don't have a problem with anything there. There will be times that I have to skip over certain stories, and that may be because maybe they're too short, or... You know, maybe it's just not really a thing that works well with a video, or it's just not really, you know, catching the way that, you know, would be... I, I hate to use words like this, but would be conducive to the channel. It sounds so fucking douchey and, 
you know, aha, I, I am businessman from business land. I hate that. I don't want to be that guy. But there are certain things that work and certain things that don't. It's kind of a thing, you know? It's kind of the way that we do things. But, yeah, honestly, there's a lot of really fake stories and a lot of, like, ones that are just like, okay, this is kind of lame, you know? Like, if you're going to fake it, it's super lame. Specifically going back to the example that I had, and again, I'm not naming names. Some of you may have actually also read it. There's a whole thing about how in one chapter, Neckbeard hits on this girl, girl, guy, I don't even remember main character. I, I don't want to say it's a dude. Uh, his, and I keep saying main character and not OP because this is obviously a character. Uh, his or her sister... And Sister is just, like, has some witty comeback, and it somehow ends with her, like, uppercutting the dude or something. Like, this is fucking a movie or some shit, and it's like, that obviously did not fucking happen. There is no possible way that that shit happened. And the big one that always stands out to me, the one that always, always, always makes my, like, radar go off is if someone mentions a YouTuber by name and it's not on their specific like subreddit or something like that. Like, I don't have a problem if you guys submit to my subreddit being like, oh, hey, Moonhorse. Like, yeah, of course. It's my subreddit, of course. You, you expect me to read it, so that's not a problem. But this exact story not only, like, called out myself, but also a couple of other people uh, I think Walter Fate was there. I think Fun with Failure. Uh, I don't remember the other two. I want to say some something with a C, but I don't know. I don't know who these people are. But the fact that he had to like specifically tag five different YouTubers to read this one specific story means that you 100% intended for this to be read on the internet. You have zero you know, intent to this, share this story because it was weird and you want to share it with a like-minded group who would be like, yeah, that's weird. No, this was intentionally done for attention. And that's why I didn't read it. That's why I still won't read it because it's just like, no, that is obviously a fake story specifically done to gar like garner attention and I'm not going to read it. I, I hate stuff like that. I don't really want to do that kind of thing. There there are people who specifically write stories and then act as though they themselves are now some sort of celebrity because, oh, you know, this this guy on the internet read my stories. Like, okay, and? Like, there are ongoing stories on my channel that people like, and some of them do not have endings. I, I did see a couple of people being like, well, where's the end of this? Like, well, it doesn't have one. Because life is like that. Sometimes stories just don't have endings, and they just kind of fade away and move on. And those people do get a certain amount of attention. Those stories do get a certain amount of attention, and that's fine. But to immediately, like, specifically write down a way for you to, like, specifically tag people to be like, yo, it's your boy, these are the people I expect to read it, you know, it's just that full-on, like, narcissistic vibe where it's just like, this isn't real. You, you did this because you want someone on YouTube to know who you are. And if you really want someone on YouTube to know who you are, like, write something or make something or do something that isn't obviously, you know, reaching for attention. You have the ability to write a story. Obviously, you can, you know, write creative fiction because this is not real. So do that. You know? Like, why not? What the fuck? I spent a lot of time writing mostly weird, esoteric short stories and crazy shit when I was younger. And that really heavily went into how I wrote, like, the Neckbeard stories I wrote when I shared them with people. And people really liked that. At one point, I think someone actually asked if I went to, like, college for writing or something. Which, no, I didn't. Uh, that's just how I write. I write how I talk, and I tend to talk really weirdly. You guys can tell. You listen to me. So, that kind of bled into it. And a lot of it was just kind of like that. There was a lot of, like, you know, specifically saying things the way I said them. And... Near some of the end of the stories I wrote, I did get a little off the rails. I kind of 
realized I was running out of certain things to say in specific context that would not fit specifically in the subreddits. So I ended one in a way that was a little bit different. And some people didn't like it. Some people were like, that's not really focusing on the subject. To which, yeah, you know what? You're right. It wasn't. And that was my fuck up. And that's kind of the reason why I branched out and started doing this and changing things to this. Because I realized that I don't have... 5,000 neckbeard stories to tell. I have a few, and not all of them are, you know, neckbeard does cringy thing, haha, Reddit updo. Some of them are just, like, life stories, and some of them were stories of, like, how we got along because we were friends. So, the basic thing that I'm kind of going with with all this is a lot of times when these stories come across as, like, neckbeards being really inorganic, or very blatant in certain things, depending on how it's done, you know, how things are said, how things play into a certain character or stuff like that, can tell you whether or not something is fake, can tell you whether or not someone is specifically writing something for attention or something like that. A lot of the stories that I end up reading, I don't really get that feeling from, some maybe, but some of the others, not really. And I have noticed that is a thing with certain stories. I mean, I read more than just Neckbeard stories. But I have noticed that it is a certain thing with certain stories where it'll come in and just be like, you know, it'll just sound like fan fiction and not the funny, weird kind that we like to read. So I'll end up skipping that kind of stuff or just putting it away, you know? And that is a thing. Like, if you're going to sell a real story, like, if you're going to really tell something that actually happened in your life, tell that. You can, you know, flavor text it, make it a little more interesting, spice it up with different, you know, wordplay and stuff. That's fine. But when it starts to bleed into, like, OP is best protagonist, our antagonist neckbeard, I'll get you next time gadget, that kind of shit. Like, no, come on, man. Now you're just fucking around. Like, I don't like that. So... I don't know. I, I guess this is just something I really wanted to share. I don't know if you guys are going to be interested in this. I know this is a more podcasty episode than it is me reading something, but you guys have kind of enjoyed my little weird podcast from time to time. So I thought this was kind of a neat subject to really approach because there's not a lot of people who do. I mean, obviously from awesome guy Walter Fate, you know, he did it. That's why I'm doing it. You, you can tell him I totally copied this too. <laughs> It'd be really funny, actually. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I love you, Walter. And I love you guys. I love you all so very much. And thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this and everything else I do or whatever, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me doing whatever the hell it is I do with my life, you can buy something from the merch shop. And I have a Ko-Fi account. And have an awesome whatever time of day it is. I don't know. Day, night. I don't know. It's one of those. Anyway, day for night. That's a movie thing. That's when you shoot and you put the color. Th I don't know why I'm explaining this. I should end this video now. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye! <laughs>